right. Well, here I am with another review, reviewing a new locomotive, and we are looking at more Batman, as you can see by the logo on the box. And it's a steamer, as you can also see. Fifty-five pounds. That's how much this model cost. Yesterday, as a majority of you should know, I went to Southern Railways. And if you've seen the video, which is the recommendation video for Southern Railways, which is becoming popular at the moment, it's so far got 21 viewers, but at the time of recording this review, sorry about the train on then, it will probably gain more. And it's actually getting a fair few comments. And as you can see, this locomotive is DCC ready which is great and it is as you can see by the side of the box a Fairburn tank number 2691 in LMS black this is the second engine I have in my collection that's in LMS black and it's the second engine as well to have LMS on the side but it's the first tank engine I own in my collection that has LMS on the side I know that's a bit of a mouthful but that's true and wow this is an absolute gorgeous engine so let's get this open and see what it's like because I'm eager to know what it's like okay so this is the old Batman box that they no longer use which is a shame because I actually do really quite like this packaging. It's just a shame it's been replaced by the new plastic packaging that we are all getting used to now. So here's the old Batman box. Just put it to one side. I mean, the new Batman packaging, it's not too bad to be honest. But, I prefer this packaging to be honest. There's something about this packaging that I like more than the new packaging, and I don't know what it is. But anyway. Right, so let's look at all this stuff first. So, here's the collector club flyer. Put that to one side. We then get the consumer guarantee. Nothing there. Put that to one side. And then we get this, the spares list. Now again, I know this is nothing new, but this is important. Do not throw it in the bin. Reason is because, well, watch my other reviews and you'll find out. Because I'm not going to mention it in this review. Because I don't want to start constantly keep mentioning this to, to other people. Why well, it's important to not throw them away in every review. So that goes to one side. Then we get this, which is the card insert for the Fairburn, which is very nice. There's nothing inside there, obviously. And that's number 42073, which is one of the preserved ones. And then on the back we get some brief history of the Fairburn. They were built, well, designed actually, should I say, by Charles E. Fairburn. He was the chief mechanical engineer of the London and Midland Scottish Railway for just a short period before he passed away in 1945 at the age of 58, which is interesting. And these tank engines, they were actually based off the ones that were designed by Stanier himself, which is also interesting. And these were used mainly for suburban passenger trains. 41 were, were built and 2 were preserved. Being numbers 42073 and 42085, which actually was painted in Caledonian Railways blue, which was a little bit authentic, inauthentic, but there you go. And this is something that the guy in the shop told me that Fowler's 264 T's came first, but then other designers such as 
Charles E. Fairburn and Sir William A. Stanier came in and designed their own 2640s, which is interesting. So that's very useful at the back there. You don't get these now, which is a little bit of a shame, but then again you still get Brief History Batman's packaging, except in that case, it's on the back of the box. Right, so I'll bring the model back into shot, and then we have a look at the detailing pack first. Which in there we get a few pipes to go under the cylinders by the looks of it. A couple of brake pipes and vacuum pipes for the buffer beam as well. So that's all good and when it comes to the detailing video of this engine, these will definitely be put on. But either way, we'll put these to one side for now and we'll get the locomotive out. So as you can see, holes in the back. Oh, there's a, another hole here which is quite different, but anyway. So let's just gently take her out. And we have these bits of plastic on her. Um, don't worry, this is not to go on the actual locomotive. These are just here to help secure it in place. So it's not really important. But anyway, we'll put those to one side. And we'll have a look at the Fairburn. Wow. Just look at this. This is absolutely stunning. Out of all the tank engines that I have in my collection, this is definitely the most gorgeous and probably one of most detailed. But let's have a look at her in detail. So first we have at the front spoon buffers, as you would expect. On the front and the back. So that's good. You have nice free wheel turning bogies at the back and the front. Now, I should be careful, it does have sanding gear here at the bottom and that is fragile. So, you're going to have to be careful with that otherwise it could snap and break. There is some riveting on the front buffer beam there and a small hook if you want to put a chain coupling on if you want. We'll just wait for the camera to focus. Come on. There you go. So that's really nicely detailed and you can see the little hole there. If I just get my big finger into shot. You can see that little hole where the detailing goes. Also, there is an end socket at the front here, so you could take this coupling out and put one of your own in, should you so wish. There's also some nice lamp points at the front there, and there's some riveting there at the front there. There's riveting going around the smoke box. The smoke box door is lovely detailed. You get a lamp point at the top there and a small handrail, and the number is printed on the front there as well, 2691. And you get the shed plate under the bottom there of the smoke box door handles. In which the smoke box door, it doesn't open on the model, but then it doesn't really need to. The chimney is beautifully moulded, and it looks like you could get a smoke generator unit in there as well. There's also some nice fine metal handrails that go down the side at the front here. They don't go all the way down to the sides of the front continuously, but then again, it doesn't really need to because that, that's how they were in real life. The dome at the top there is nicely detailed. You have the whistle and the safety bombs there as well. Also there is riveting on the cab roof there. Now the cab vents don't open. But you know, I've, I've actually yet to come across a steam loco from Batman that actually does have opening vents on a steam loco. But then again they don't really need to either. There's a nice coal out in there. It's only plastic and it doesn't look like it's removable either. 
but I will get some real coal put in there, definitely. And that will be shown in the detailing video when I do the detailing video of this loco. And the livery, it's spot on. Just look at that. Oh, excuse the marks there. Such beautiful LMS black. With LMS crisply printed on the side there. And the number, 2691. And then you have 4P, 4P sorry, printed underneath the windows. And the P basically stands for passenger. There's also some nice glazing in the windows there. And you have some riveting on the top of the water tank with the water tank cap fillers there for where the water goes into. The neck holders, which is what they are called, are very nicely detailed as well. There's even some slight riveting on the cylinders there as well. Just look at that. And just look at all the rivets you get on these side tanks and the bunker. And that is a really nice touch. You can't forget the cab steps as well, which is nicely done. And the cab doors to stop the crew falling at the footplate. And also in there, we might actually have... Well, actually, if you look closely, we do have some cab detail in there. I don't know if it's painted because it's actually hard to see but it is there so that's a nice touch then on the back you get some riveting on the back of the bunker more lamp irons and all these handrails as well they come at the back and then you have a little plate there which is 2000 so that's obviously a 2000 gallon and also, look at the side rods and the link motion and the valve gear. It's all done accurately. And just can't wait to see all that moving, just like on the real thing. And you said wheel then. And then if we turn it around to the other side, it's just as nice detailed. Accurate LMS lettering, and there's the number, 2691. And what I like about this is the number is nice and big, and so it stands out a mile for when it's running on the layout. Again, lots more riveting. And sanding gear, which is really nice. And rails too. Wow. I'm absolutely in love with this locomotive. If you haven't got one of these, get one. They do them in BR black, lined, either the light crest or early emblem. You can get them weathered and LMS black. And I think LMS black is definitely one of the best liveries that it carried in real life. And since I don't hardly have many locomotives in LMS black, I thought that I would get it in LMS Black. But anyway, wow. Sorry about the running water there, if you can hear it. And it's also quite heavy as well. But that's important. We need the weight. Because there's no traction tyres on this model, so all the weight is going to help it pull a suburban train on the layout. Or if you want it coupled up to a good train, whatever you want it to pull, all the weight will help it. But wow. And I forgot to mention as well, there is some small rivets there, just at the front of the smoke box door, which is really nice. And there's even some rivets on the running plate as well, before I forget to mention. This is just a stunning locomotive. But anyway, I spoke about it in detail enough. Let's put her on the track and see how it runs.
Okay, so here we are at the track. Now, the Fairburn has actually been run because it was tested in the shop, but it's not run on this layout yet. Okay, so let's get it onto the track. So all wheels are on. So now let's give it some juice. And away she goes. Now even though on the power setting it's not high, she's running absolutely well. There she goes under the tunnel. As you can see, this is the latest work that has been done. So it is taking shape. And watch out for an upcoming video of it soon. I promise. Here she comes, passing the windmill. And the class 108 parked up in the station. And the 166 that's parked in the station where the DMUs will be parking. Just look at that linkage moving. Let's get a close-up shot of it here, shall we? Look at that. Let's make it go just a little bit quicker. There we go. So what's left to say about it? It runs well and smoothly too. Such a gorgeous livery with LMS written on the side. That's why I love about the livery the most. Every light must have one. Now I would get it coupled up to a train in this review, but the battery is presently going out. But I shall do a separate video of this pulling the train. And in the end of the detailing video of this local, I promise I shall get it pulling the train too. Just absolutely exquisite. Now of all the tank engines I own, this is one of the best. And most detailed as well.